So now it's time to inspect the bulbs and make sure that every single one of them is working because the worst thing that could happen is you raise it up and there's a bulb out. Yo, what's going on guys? It's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I do string bulb lighting because if you guys haven't seen, I do a lot of glass string bulb lighting. We have a lot of projects that are supposed to be coming up this year. We'll see how that works out, but uh, excuse the, the mess that's in the garage right now. Well, it might look a little organized, but I'm working on a lot of projects right now um, during this off time trying to stay busy. So like over here is some of the stuff. I'm working on a big installation project. A lot of stuff's coming for that. Amp speakers and stuff that we're going to be putting into a venue. You guys have seen the ceremony rack well you haven't seen the second video that'll be coming out on the ceremony rack when i show you guys my totes and all my labeling i've been doing and stuff like that i picked up 24 new up lights these are all battery powered up lights they're chinese I got 24 of them in three row cases there's one there one there one there again just because i know everyone's going to ask i'll link them down in the description down below these are the exact same ones that uh, joe bun has joe has like a hundred of these so now i got 24 of them so far after unboxing and everything super satisfied but i'm doing product testing to see how long the like the battery lasts and stuff consistency between them and stuff like that but uh, other than that just really been working on uh, my labeling getting stuff labeled um, that label's fallen off, so I need to fix that. But getting stuff labeled, I gotta go through cables. I got all these brand new custom uh, DMX and XLR cables that have our like branding and logos on them. And then I started doing uh, colored zip ties for coordination. You can see a lot of them in there as well. The cables are made by Elite Core. I guess I'll throw a link down in the description down below to those cables as well, as well as where you can get the little zip ties to put on them. But I'm not gonna make a video on these cables and how I color code them that because uh, my good friend DJ Woopig already made a video on it. How I'm doing it. He, ma he made the video. I was like, that is a great idea. So I decided to do it. I'll link it down in the description down below. But this is enough, uh, just kind of like intro blabbing. Uh, everyone's been asking for it. I am doing a complete equipment walkthrough of the garage. I'm going to be filming that uh, sometime here in the next week because again, I have nothing else to do. But we're doing string bulb lighting. So let me show you what we're using. So first things first, with string bulb lighting, you need to have a support system to hang the lights from. So I use these big ass mega heavy ass base plates down here these are quarter inch thick steel these things are quarter inch thick steel they are extremely heavy they weigh 70 something pounds a piece which is what you need and they're 24 by 24 so they're massive heavy base plates because you have a lot of force when you're doing these string bulbs especially 12 feet in the air so we have extendable pipe and drape poles in black because they look a lot cleaner than the steel ones i actually own six of those there's two more back there making my little backdrop up, but uh, we're gonna be using those with these big ass base plates all of this is from Georgia Expo and then also if 70 pounds wasn't enough weight I throw a 30 pound rubber weight that's back there on top of this to make basically a hundred pounds of weight at the base so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take these and set them up out here So the poles are set up on either side right here. I'll pan out and get a bigger shot for you guys. But uh, uh, I went ahead and took my little rolling, I don't know what you call this, but you roll it in, it tells you how far it is in between. We're actually 35 feet in between both poles. Now, this setup right here that I'm gonna show you, you can easily run 50 feet. That is the max that I have done. But 40, 50 feet, that's about the um, safe range, I would say, for a setup like this with this amount of weight with the one base plate and one uh, rubber and then the pole about 50 feet 40 to 50 feet is about the farthest I would take this you might be able to go a little bit more especially if you buy some more like rubber weights or some sandbags that for only but that's about the safe range that I got so now that the bases are set up let's talk about how we're gonna actually hang the lights from pole to pole all right so this is one of the totes I have with the glass string bulb lights inside of it I put a little foam in the bottom uh, this is just kind of how I transport the lights. I have another one up there and I have more coming because I have another 20, 25 foot strands of those coming. So I got to go buy some more totes. But yeah, we got some pretty big projects this year that we're going to be doing, which I need to buy more string bulb lighting for. So I got more coming, more totes, but this is kind of how I've been transporting it for the last couple years. So this is our lights and I do want to point out, um, I do have these right here. So I have this one right here and I also have another one, this one right here as well. So what these are, are dimmer controls. So these are incandescent bulbs. These are not LED. So I like to have control of being able to dim these and uh, raise the brightness, lower the brightness. And instead of using like an old fashioned dimmer pack, which I don't own, I just bought these right here, which are simple plug and play dimmer packs. So basically this is your control of your brightness and go all the way up, all the way down. And this one is the same thing. And the only difference between these two is this one can handle a thousand watts of power. 
and then this one can handle about 500 watts of power so basically you can hook more strings of lights up to this one compared to this one so that's the difference between those two right there but i highly recommend these especially if you're gonna do like lighting over the dance floor um it's nice to have them on a dimmer so that way you can turn the lights down for open dancing and raise them up during dinner now on to the other tote first off i gotta take these out of the tote these are our LED curtains. We use them for backdrops. We used these out at the airport when we did the little twinkle backdrop. Now this is what I was trying to get. This is the cable wire that is actually strung between the two poles that the lights then clip onto. So all the lights have clips and we clip them on to this cable wire. So these have already kind of been pre-made up, but it comes normally in a spool like this. This is just some extra that I have here. And then it comes with a bunch of other accessories that are really nice to have. There's just a bunch of stuff. These are like in kits. They're actually string bulb hanging kits. Pretty coincidental, pretty nice. These right here are what we use to connect to the poles. So let me show you that first. So this is kind of high up for me to film, but you take the hook, you put the hook in the slot, and then we're going to clip our wire to this. And the nice part about having this attachment right here is you can turn this to tension the line. So if the line has a lot of slack in it, you can turn this and tension it. Or if the line is really too tight, you can loosen the line with this as well. So that's a pretty nice feature to have for doing string bulb lighting. So in the kit, you get your steel wire, which is vinyl coated. So it's an actual wire and then it's black vinyl coated. So that way it blends in nicely with the wires on your black ones. You can also buy this in white, I believe. But yeah, we have these hook things right here. So this hooks up into the slot on the pipe and drape. And then this then is our connector that we connect the loop on the wire. Out the box, you obviously just have a wire. You don't have any loops. So what I use are these connectors right here that also come in the kit. So these are simple pass-through connectors. So you pass the wire through one side and then you pass it back through the other side and then you use these screws to tighten it down onto the wire. So what you do is you make it into a loop like this and then tighten down your Phillips screws on both sides and then you have a loop now that you can clamp this to. So that way up on the pole, we just clip this onto this and we are good to go. Now I do want to mention that sometimes at some venues we just attach these to like trees or like beams that are already in the facility instead of having to set up our poles. So basically you just take the wire, you run it around the beam and then you feed it back through the little screw there and then screw it down. So having a Phillips screwdriver handy is uh, pretty important. The other part of having the Phillips screwdriver handy is that when you're running different lengths of runs, normally your wire is going to be a little bit long, so you have to pull back a little bit. So now I'm gonna be attaching our wire to the poles. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna take the initial loop here and I'm basically going to clip it on. And now we're gonna go over to the other pole. As you guys can see here, my uh, wire is significantly longer and actually the connector is up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew that connector and slide it down the line until I get it somewhere in this vicinity so that way I can hook it up to the pole right here. So again, very simple. You just take a screwdriver, unscrew this screw, take your, your little screw out, and now I can slide this, uh, I don't know which way I gotta slide down the line. This way this way so now you just slide this little connector down the line until we get to where we need to go so one thing I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna eye it up up here so around. and now I'm going to screw this back in just by hand first and then you just want to give it like a little bit of a turn you don't want to crank on this a little bit of a turn and you'll know when it's tight it won't budge at all uh, so now I'm gonna take the other side off and I'm gonna slide the other end through this end until we have a loop so take your other end just insert it into this slot and pull it through. So you have a loop like this, then screw it back in, tighten it down, good to go. Detach it up. And then you can kind of just take the spare line, run it down over and let it hang down your pole. So again, there basically what I was saying is you can take the spare line and you can kind of run it down the back side of your pole and it's pretty easy to hide being all black. But uh, this brings up a good point. As you guys can see, I have a lot of slack here. I've cut all of my lengths of wire into 50 foot runs because that is pretty much the max that I'm gonna run in one pole to pole run. So it just makes sense to have them all at 50 foot. We go a little bit less, we go a little bit less, we go a little bit more, we go a little bit more. So that's how I do it. And now if you can see, I'm not sure how well you guys can see on the camera this wire, it is kind of loose and that's kind of a problem. I need to tighten this down a little bit because when you put weight on it, this is going to sag significantly with the lights. So you wanna have it pretty taut. Um, and right now, as you can kind of see when I pull on this, it's uh, pretty loose. You wanna be able to just barely pull on it and have no 
no slack. So ideally I would like it to be about that taut so that when I pull on it, there's like little to no give. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew that real quick and tighten that up a little bit. Now here, this was about the, the tightness I wanted so that when you pull on it, there's little to no give. That's where I wanted that. So now we get to do the fun part and that is hanging all of our bulbs. And then we get to raise it up. All right, so these are the glass string bulbs that I use. Like I mentioned, they're incandescent and yes, they are real glass, which means they're prone to breaking. But on the good side though, what I like about these are they're cheap. They're roughly like 14, 15 bucks for a 25 foot strand. So you can imagine that price wise, these are relatively inexpensive to buy a bunch. And actually, it's cheaper to buy a full strand of 25 lights. This is a 25 foot, 25 bulb strand. It's cheaper to buy this strand than it is to buy the replacement bulbs themselves. So, um, yeah, I, I can't beat it. It's a great deal. Other than the glass and then breaking, the other downside to these are you cannot run a lot of these back to back. So wattage wise, the max you can run back to back is four strands. So you can only hook four of these strands back to back, but that is 100 feet. And like I mentioned, max we're doing in one run is 50 foot, but you also got to consider where you're going to plug all these in. So if I was running, say, another strand going this way, 50 feet, I would basically put an outlet here in the middle or one at the end, and I could run all four together. Or in a scenario where we have like three or four runs coming off this, so we got 50 feet that way, 50 feet that way, 50 feet that way, 50 feet that way, I would just run an outlet box up here and plug them all in. So that is something you need to consider. Power wise, you can only hook four of these up end to end to end, which kind of is a little bit of a bummer and it does cause a little bit of a headache, but like I mentioned, it's not that big of a deal, especially when these are so cheap. So again, these will be linked in the description down below. They do have clips on all of these, so they just kind of clip onto the wire. One thing to consider though is the first clip you do, you need to make sure you clip it on the outside of the loop. I'll show you that so that way they don't slide down the run over the night, um, if that makes sense. And when you're hanging these up, you want them to stay somewhat taut. So the line takes all the stress, but these could also slide down the line. So we want to hook the first bulb and the last bulb into the loop we made up here or onto the actual metal clamp that we have up here too. So I'll show you that here in a second. Let's uh, let's start hanging some lights. So like I was mentioning, what you want to do is either clamp your first bulb right here so that way it can't slide down the run or actually what I do is I go back here and I clamp right into this metal piece right here. So that's where I hook it and then basically you just go down the run and connect your bulbs. All right, well, as you guys can tell, I'm short, but I wanted to show um, kind of how you do the connector because this this is important because the connector over time, when you're raising this up and down or if you're in a windy environment, you don't want this to come unplugged. So basically the way that I do it is I actually will plug it together like so, and then I will take basically my second to last bulb, the one that I just did, and I'll bring it back and I will clamp these together. So um, you guys probably might have been not able to see that, but basically I ran the clamp across the cord, but this way it kind of takes all the stress relief off the cord so that the, the cord will stay plugged in. And then you basically continue on with your strand to the end. So right here is kind of a close up, that way you guys can see. But basically um, I, I thread it back. So this is the end right here of this strand, comes up here and then I loop back around and then I hook it around this bulb. This loop back around is to the first bulb and then I basically clamp the two together like that to the wire and to the end of this strand so that way there's no pull on this wire whatsoever and then continue down the strand and i'll show you guys what we do at the end so again here at the end we connect it to the metal piece right here so that way it doesn't pull back and it handles all the slack we do have all these extra bulbs though that we have to deal with and uh this is the case if basically you get to the end of your run and you got extra bulbs um basically what i do is i unscrew them all because these are incandescents they don't rely on one another for power so i take all the bulbs out and then inside of our totes that we made we put the bulb holders in the bottom for all the spare bulbs so that's why the whole entire bottom of all of our totes is designed for all the extra bulbs so i'm gonna go ahead and take all the bulbs off and then we get to power it up and this is where you make sure that all of your lights are working then we raise them up all right, so now it's time to hook up the power and uh, it's really helpful to have some Velcro ties as well as some tape to tape your power cord up there because if there's anything that's gone wrong with string bulb lighting for me in the past, it's that the power cord has somehow fell out of the the socket that was holding it in and the power cable fell down and the lights lost power so I had to lower it down and re-plug it in. So over the years of doing this, this is the number one thing that normally fails. So make sure you attach this as best you can up here so it doesn't fall. 
So now it's time to inspect the bulbs and make sure that every single one of them is working because the worst thing that could happen is you raise it up and there's a bulb out. And they're all working, they're all working, they're all working, they're all working. This is the most rare case ever. So unless your lights are like brand new, um, these are not. This is a very, very rare case that you put them up and they all are working. Um, normally there's one or two that are out. That's why you need to buy extra strands so that you have extra bulbs. That's one thing. Remember, these are cheap to buy, so buy a ton of them. I have, I think, I think I have like 20 or 30 strands right now, and then I have another 20 coming, so have overkill of these lights. So now we move on to raising these poles up, and basically you want to do this in an alternating fashion. So you want to raise this side by like two feet, and then raise that side by two feet, and then that side, and then that side, until you get to the height that you want. These poles right here are from Georgia Expo, like I mentioned, and uh, ignore the fact that these are like kind of leading. It's actually because the concrete is actually, well, asphalt is uneven over here, but it'll, it'll work just the same. So these are the variable height black poles from Georgia Expo. Again, I'll link them in the description down below, but these are the seven to 12 foot variations. So right now, the top of this is at seven foot. And when you raise it up, I'll show you here. There are indicator markers to tell you how high up the top of the pole is, which is very helpful, especially when you get to the very end of it. Um, but I'm now going to alternate up here and then up here. And uh, this is the slip collar version. So as I raise it up, the pole locks into place. And if I want to lower it down, you do that. You raise this pin on both sides and it lowers down. Uh, don't do what I just did. Uh, make sure you have a hand there to slowly lower that down. But I'm going to alternate and raise this up until we get to 12 feet. And there you have it. There you have it. Glass string bulb lighting. That's how you do it. 12 feet in the air on the poles. Let me get the tape measure, but I believe in the center it is like nine foot. I don't think you guys can actually tell, but that's nine foot in the air. So this right here, like I measured, is drooping down to nine feet in the center at the lowest point, basically. Now, this is a little bit loose. I could have tightened up those cables just a little bit more um, to bring this up probably to about nine and a half feet. But typically what I'm finding when I do a 50 foot run, which I said is pretty much the max that I would want to go comfortably distance wise with this setup. But with that 50 foot run, I'm seeing it uh, dro droop down to about eight and a half to eight feet, um, eight feet being the lowest, sometimes seven and a half if the client wants it to be like a lot of droop in it. Um, but that's typically what I'm seeing and that is plenty high for people to walk underneath of it. So I hope that answered a lot of people's questions on how you actually do string bulb lighting. One thing I do want to mention is you actually have to have that wire. Um, like 100% of the time. The only way I would not run that wire is if it's under 25 feet. Um, and the main reason for that is because these wires that connect the bulbs, those wires are not designed to hold the weight of the bulbs. It's it's just designed to connect the bulbs. It's not designed to hang from. Those, those literally, those wires just go into the next bulb and they're just loosely soldered in there. So you put enough force on it, those wires will rip out in between the bulbs and it will crash down on you. So you wanna run that steel wire so that way it handles all of the load. Some additional points on uh, the wires coming down the poles. Obviously you want black wires so that way they're hidden. Um, but like I mentioned, gaff tape your wire multiple times going up the pole. I got one at the top, one at the bottom. I'd probably put one in the middle too if I was actually doing this legitimately at an event. On this side with the extra strings of lights coming down, I would definitely be gaff taping these significantly to the pole. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is just kind of how you lay out your string bulb lighting. I would definitely make sure that this pole where the extra string lighting comes down, this is kind of like in a corner maybe or towards the front of a venue. Like if this is an outdoor install, um, this actually works out really great because it's kind of like in the corner. If this is like the dance floor area and that's kind of like the the grass area of like an outdoor setup, this would work out great because those those little like extra bulb things that kind of are like a little bit of an eyesore, it's on the back side of the pole where people won't see it unless they go over into the grass for some reason. So just a couple things to keep in mind. As you saw, basically you raise it up a few feet at a time. Uh, one thing that just kind of keep in mind, it's actually pretty quick to raise if you saw. So what I did was I raised this side up two feet to start and then I was able to raise that side by four feet. So basically I went from seven foot over here to nine foot and then I was able to go up to 11 foot on that side off the get go. And then I just basically came over here, raised this one up to 12 and then went the last foot over there to go up to 12 feet and uh, they're up and ready to run. So. 
now it's the fun part. The event's over with, and we get to tear down the string bulb lighting, and uh, this is extremely quick. It's literally less than half the time to take it down. We gotta do the same process that we did to put it up, so we gotta bring them down two feet at a time. Again, you can do two feet on one side, and then do four feet, and then two feet, and then down. So it's pretty quick to bring them down, and then basically you do the reverse process. I'm not gonna really go into much detail, but basically you start unclamping the bulbs, wind them up, put them in your tote, and you're done. And then you take the wire down, wind it up, put it in your tote, and you're done. You take your poles down, and you're, you're good to go. The hardest part's carrying those damn 70-pound base plates. And that right there is everything broken down super quick, super easy. One little point on uh, basically management of all this, the, the wire, I always put a velcro tie on just like all other cables um just helps keep it together string bulb lights not so much you don't really have to do that because the bulbs kind of hold themselves together anyways uh it does look like a little bit of a rat's nest right here but if you pull these out they come out um very easily but that's pretty much it that's how i do string bulb lighting again i'll link everything that I used all the little like dimmer packs and all that uh, in the description down below. So if you guys want to get into this, you can check it out as well. I will say straight up though, the one thing that is not cheap, the the bulbs, the wire, the, that's pretty cheap. That's pretty cheap to get into. What's expensive is those base plates and those poles. So with the poles and bases costing the majority of the money, I kind of have to price it out based on how many feet of string bulb lighting and how many bases and poles I have to bring to an event. So just to give you guys a rough number, again, this is just what I'm pricing in my area and that's what pricing seems to be uh, working for me. Um, but typically for a string bulb lighting job, I'm charging about 20 bucks per 25 foot strand of lights that I have to bring. Now this is considering that we're doing more than just one strand. One strand of string bulb lighting, I'm not gonna do 25 bucks. It's gonna be a minimum of $100 to do string bulb lighting no matter what. Um, that's just a little factor in there with the fact that I have to travel, I have to have labor. Uh, so at minimum, it's gonna be $100. But when I'm figuring up a quote for like a big project, right? Um, it's t about 20 bucks per 25 foot strand of lights that I have to use and then another $40 per uh, like pole and base that I have to set up. So for example, say I'm going to go DJ a wedding and they want to add string bulb lighting enhancement and they just want to do it very, very minimal. They just want to run basically what we just set up 50 feet, 40 to 50 feet above the head table just to add just a little bit of um, atmosphere, a little bit of lighting, some sort of uh, effect basically an enhancement above the head table they want to run just one 40 to 50 foot run two poles um, above the head table and i'm already there djing and doing the wedding that would typically be 125 dollar add-on for them to have at their event and again that's just pricing in my area pricing does vary especially with how complicated it is if you guys saw i'll pop a photo up right now i did like five 50 foot runs over water that is really challenging so the price went up on that job because i can't go through and clip the bulbs along the line i have to like slide them down the line which is uh, a lot more labor intensive to say the least so anyways that is how i do string bulb lighting that's a little bit of a breakdown of how i price it out um, for clients if you guys have any questions comments or concerns leave them down in the comment section book down below or hit me up on instagram i answer all my dms on instagram if you send me a question i will answer you so if you have any questions that you don't want to put in the comment section down below hit me up on instagram or follow me over there as well also don't forget to check out the dj life podcast the dj life podcast Podcast. It's me and Eric's new podcast. Uh, we've been talking about it a little bit, but uh, we have a couple episodes up there already. We're gonna be doing it kind of like semi-monthly, like a couple times a, a month or once or twice a month. But yeah, go check out the DJ Life podcast if you want to see me and Eric sit down and talk for literally like an hour on a topic. And if you have any topics, let us know as well. But uh, lastly, don't forget to like on this video, leave a comment down below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you see all the awesome new videos that I'm gonna be pumping out, including the full garage tour. Anyways, guys, my my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep the market spinning, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.